Hi, I've just looked at the interview on Channel 4 television where Ian Hissi Ali is asked questions concerning her friend Theo van Gogh who was killed because of the movie the two of them put together called Submission. And she was asked whether or not this is a problem in the West and whether it's going to be an ongoing problem and is she not to blame because she has brought it upon herself with the movie Submission, which is derogatory. Now, I, I'd like to re respond to that because I think it's very important that we understand what the issue is here. And the issue is not whether or not somebody says something that might be derogatory or some may say something that may be debilitating for one religion. If a religion is strong enough, it should be able to uh, stand the attacks or the debates or the questions or challenges that are put at it. And that's exactly what Ayn Hissi Ali has done here. She has basically just taken verses from the Quran itself. How can you be upset by the Quran if this is your holy book? And she has taken those verses re re uh, referred to, referring to women, uh, verses that are difficult for her as a woman to read, and they're difficult for me when I read them. But there's a much greater and much deeper problem here, and that is if somebody gets off feels offended by something that I say or something that someone else says, in, in this case, Ayn Hirsi Ali and Theo van Gogh, if you get offended by that and you feel that you must kill that person or you must censor them or shut them up, then where's it going to stop? Any religion worth its salt has to be open to criticism. Any book, any revelation worth its salt has to be open to criticism. Any prophet if he claims to be a prophet or a minister or an evangelist or a diest, anyone who claims to be a man of God must be open to criticism uh, and must be held accountable for what they say. That's what open debate is, and that's one of the great things about YouTube. We're doing that right here. We are asking people to debate these issues, and we don't want censorship, and we certainly don't want death threats, and we don't want to have violence brought into the picture just because we may be saying something that is difficult for certain people to hear. Underlying this is something that happened this last year that I would like to talk about concerning a law that almost got passed. The Incitement to Religious Hatred Law, which was almost passed in February of this year, 2006. It bothered me to no end to realize that this was a law that was only proposed by Muslims. It was a law that the Muslims wanted to basically bring in to eradicate any criticism of the Quran and any criticism of the Prophet Muhammad. And of course, by bringing in this law, it would, have it would have stifled any type of debate, any type of challenge to both these areas of authority for Islam. As a Christian, I did not want to see this law brought in because we allow people to challenge, criticize, debate our Bible. We have so for the last 200 years. We encourage it because in encouraging it forces us to be able to come back with some type of rebuttal. It opens up uh, all kinds of uh, avenues for query. And it's this kind of debate that we are trying to engender and trying to enthuse here on YouTube. I'm so glad that law was defeated. It was defeated by one vote, one simple vote. We probably know whose vote that was. But it's important for us talking about these issues that we, those of us on YouTube, those of us who are using YouTube as a means, of a, as a platform for debate, that we don't get caught into these kind of diatribes, these kind of challenges where we say that we people must be eradicated, they must be censored, they must be thrown out. Uh, in this case, they must be executed. Now, Ayan Hirsi Ali has now had to flee Holland. She's now living in another country, in fact, in my country, United States. And I think that's unfortunate. I do not want to see that kind of atmosphere brought here. Let's be careful that though some of these questions may be challenging and though they may be difficult to listen to as a Christian or as a Muslim, we're big enough to take these kind of challenges. Our religion is big enough. It has to be big enough to take this kind of rebuke. And if it is not, then you must question whether or not your faith is worthy to be in the public domain. We want to keep it in the public domain. I know you want to keep it in the public domain. So come on home and let's talk more about some of the difficulties between both faiths and both books. And yes, both originate, uh, or origins of both books, and that is the person of Jesus Christ and the prophet Muhammad. If we can't talk about those three things, then what's the use of having YouTube? This is Jay, over and out.